Hello everyone, I am Night Barrel, and this is Kinetica, a futuristic racing game in which, as you can see, the people themselves are the vehicles and can travel at over 300 miles an hour across uh, walls and ceilings and just about whatever. So let's go ahead and get right down to it. We're going to choose our fastest character in the game, Greg. And for the all tracks category, we're doing uh, three seasons worth of tracks and three bonus tracks that you unlock by completing each of the seasons. So time will start once I select the first season. Uh, we don't necessarily use RTA for record purposes, we just use the combined in-game times for each of the races. But uh, we'll just go ahead and get started right now. With our first track, Macropolis. So some basics uh, about the game. As you'll see very shortly, I'm doing stunts to fill up my boost meter that you see in the right hand side of the screen. And uh, what you do is, uh, is you hold down the stunt button and do a series of input commands, or directional commands I should say. Oh, I think it pushed me right up there. And that'll do the corresponding stunt, which gives you boost. Usually you do stunts uh, along long straightaways. And without interruption, as you can see, the AI loves to bump into me. Not only does the AI slow you down, they also halt any combos that you do for stunting as well. And as you can see, I'm getting these yellow power crystals. And the, as you can see, these crystals give you power-ups for... You can collect five yellow crystals or one red crystal. And that'll automatically give you a power-up. There are six power-ups in the game, but the one power-up that we want the most is something called Super Boost. And what that is is... It replaces your regular boost meter for a, um, a brief period of time. And it allows you to go beyond your top speed. So our top boosted speed is uh, just over 310 miles an hour. But Super Boost can allow you to go at 350 miles an hour. And this is the same for all of the, all of the characters in the game. No matter what your top speed is at, uh, it's always 350 with Super Boost. Uh, some other power-ups in the game. There's a uh, infinite boost, which is self-explanatory. It gives you infinite boost for a brief period of time. There's 30% boost, which is also self-explanatory. Uh, there's faster stunts, which you do stunts at twice the speed for a brief period of time. That power-up is self-activated though. It doesn't automatically activate like super boost or infinite boost. And there's also Burst Attack, which I have right here. And I'll probably demonstrate it soon, or maybe not. We're just going to get another power-up. But it's basically like an EMP for kinetic, for Kinetica bikes, in which um, it emits a shockwave, and it basically stops all bikes in their tracks for like a couple seconds or so. It's very devastating when it happens to us, so we just pray that we don't get hit by that. And um, let's see, what's the? There's also drafting, uh, and drafting is where where you draft uh, behind another uh, character, then you get boost added to your boost meter as well. So we're just going to go ahead and get right down to Lost City. This is another basic track. Uh, nothing too complicated. It's fairly straightforward. Uh, but there's a lot of things that can slow you down. So you have to build up your boost meter and kind of hold it in for like the more dire moments. But this is where this is where to practice your stunting because there are quite a few number of straightaways on this track. And what you're going to see me do is something called skid boosting. And what that is is 
You basically go into it. You use the the brake to go into a drift, and then you double tap the accelerator to get a burst of speed. And this is very helpful in that it doesn't use up any boost meter, and uh, it'll help keep up with your top speed. All right, although this isn't good. Uh, low on my boost meter, but thankfully we got super boost. Always want to see the super boost. I was like, it's not a very good ideal place to have the super boosts. So, I'm gonna have to stunt here. Connecticut is a fairly difficult game. Uh, partially because for most characters, when you turn at a high speed, you basically go into an uncontrolled skid, which of course is very bad because you can't control them and you can't really basically go forward, you're just fish tailing out of control. Oh man. And I'm out of boosts because I'm just going all over the place. It's very difficult to control. Especially on this track. So we'll just do stunts just to be safe because we're lapping everybody here. And the AI can really slow you down because if they touch you, then you lose a lot of speed. So it's best to avoid that whenever possible, obviously. Alright, so we're gonna go into Electrica. Now, the Electrica series of tracks is actually my favorite because it features a lot of speed pads and boost strips. Uh, that, that's the technical term, boost strips. And of course, everybody's running into me. All right, I'm just gonna try and get away from everyone first. And I'm gonna be, well, let's get to this ramp first. I can. So right there, I just reset and then the spawn put me back uh, on the other side of the jump. Not back, but forward to the other side of the jump. And this is going to be very useful later on in the game. I'm going to be using this in other spots on other tracks. And this form of reset abuse is... Well, it's reset abuse. I have pretty much explained it all. So, there's also uh, a mechanic in this game called boost siphoning. And what that is, is you hold down a certain button and you actually drain the boost from the boost pad into your boost meter. And this is helpful for storing boost that you don't need right away. But what I'm doing is something called siphon mashing, where I just basically mash the siphon button so that I get both the benefit of the siphon and the boost strip uh, at the same time. So it's pretty much a win-win in that regard. Plus it's just fun when you're just speeding along with these boost strips. Really fun. So I'm going to do another reset right here. That's if I have enough boost to get back up to top speed quickly. And when you reset, um, if you're in the middle of getting a power up or you have a power up, then you actually lose that power up overall. So best to only reset when you have like four pips up. So that when you get that fifth pip, you'll have a power up ready to go. And good super boost luck in this track. That wasn't too bad. Okay, so coming up is Orbital Junction. Uh, this, uh, while well, I adjust in my chair. Uh, Orbital Junction is fairly unique in that the shortcuts in this track 
are... Uh, you get to them by flipping onto the ceiling, which we'll see in just a bit. Just while we try and get away from everyone. And we'll use burst attack to get away from the AI. And we'll use some skid boosting to not only keep up with our top speed, but also get around the corners. Because technically, Wreck has very bad cornering. But it's actually not that bad. He can still turn just as well. He can still turn very well, even with the low cornering stat. And that's kind of the pro pro problem. Ugh, can't speak. And I didn't let go of the stun button. That's kind of the problem with uh, some of the characters with actually high cornering is that they just get at the mere thought of turning, which is not 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 great. Okay, just continuing on with our skid boosting. Um, I think I didn't mention another aspect of skid boosting in that uh, we also have something called snaking and basically we just skid boost continuously uh, while not turning all that much so that we can keep up with our top speed but again not using any boost at all and this will definitely help in some of the more longer straightaways Gotta concentrate because these AI love to get in the way. Like as you see right there, you just fishtailed me. So I have to be super careful here. It's gonna be a bit slow, but don't wanna run into any walls. Okay, I think we're nope, we're not good. Still someone there. That's okay. That wasn't terrible. But that's some of the dangers of this game. Or at least running this game. There are the possible slowdowns that can seemingly come out of nowhere. But we're gonna head into season two and start off with New Vega. This is actually the shortest of the four tracks in the season which are fairly lengthy overall. So we're gonna start with this shortcut right here. It's a bit tough to get into uh, the first time you're playing it, but once you get the hang of it, you could just simply like run against the wall and go into it. And we're gonna take this upper path right here. And we're going to counter these series, the, these couple of red crystals. Hopefully we'll get something good on the second one as well, since we got super boost on the first one. And uh, with the after effects of super boost, uh, you actually maintain that speed. Like right here. Well, I guess I couldn't show you there, but... Uh, if Super Boost ends, like say in the middle of a jump, uh, if you boost as soon as you land, you can maintain that speed over your boosted top speed uh, until it like lowers down to your to your normal boosted top speed. As long as you're not like doing anything else, like regular boosting or turning or anything like that. Running into walls, that'll all slow you down. Alright, so we're gonna use faster stunts here. Yeah, we're gonna angle this slightly. There we go. Oh, didn't want to do that. So we're just gonna reset. If anything majorly bad happens, we can just simply reset. It's not too much of a penalty. Just you have to start back up from 
from stop. So. Alright, getting lucky on these super boost power ups too. And. I'm about I forgot to say that this track introduces half pipes, which are incredibly difficult to control your bike in. Um, I don't know the exact reason why, but you just end up slipping and sliding all over the place if you're not too careful. So skid boosting is the more reasonable way to uh, go about uh, navigating those half pipes. So we're here at Electrica 2, Electrica Boogaloo. This is actually the longest track in the game, and we're going to see some reset abuse right off the bat. Hopefully, I don't have to run into too many people. Yeah, we're going to do some skid boosting as well. Now we're going to do a full siphon boost here, just for this next part right here. We're going to have to boost from stopping back up to our boosted top speed oh man I that was terrible that was a terrible angle right there okay, but we got it under control and we don't want to go too fast because we don't want to be on the top portion of the track we want to be here on the bottom it's much faster that way even though the top features a bunch of boost strips on them a bunch of boost strips. But it takes a bit of time getting up there in the first place. That's why it's preferable that you go on the bottom route. And getting a bunch of drafting powers, that's pretty terrible. But this part right here is one of my favorites. The the boost strips in the hallway, and then double loop de loop, which is super awesome. So we're gonna do this right here, and we're going to reset right here and just boost back up to top speed. And we're just going to maintain the speed by skid boosting. This part right here is a bit tricky. You have to know where to position yourself, and it depends on how fast you're going. Well, that's unfortunate. I didn't realize that I was that close to getting a power up. But uh, depending on how fast you go, uh, you have to like turn your bike over to the right as you're leaving the ramp, so that you land on the track and not fly off of it. And from here, once we get back up to top speed, we can just skid boost until we hit these boost strips. It seems like at times where you just get nothing but drafting and burst attacks, uh, you know, you feel like the RNG isn't on your side, but there are times where you get like three super boosts in a row and you get nothing but infinite boosts, and it's just nothing but awesome. Those are good feelings, and hopefully we'll continue having them in this run. Oh, that, I didn't skid boost for some reason. Doesn't want to skid boost. Alright, come on. Sometimes the game likes to eat up inputs. That was just bad positioning on my part. And I don't think I'm gonna have enough boost. No, just barely enough boost. probably hear me click clacking away while I'm doing these stunts. There we go. Just reset here. Otherwise, we have to slow down or we have to use the, the safety net that's on the walls. infinite boost we could just take this inside more. It's 
especially since it's the third lap. Normally we want to save up as, most, as much boost as possible uh, during laps one and two so that we have enough boost for the early part of the, the lap. Super boost. Oh, of course we get super boost right as we about to finish. Yeah, back in the day, like five minutes was kind of like the norm on how fast you can go, but now it's like well under 450, like right around 440, so it's pretty quite the progress over the time that I've uh, played this game, or speed ran this game, I should say. So, right here is Cliffhanger. It's a lengthy track, and it's more of an endurance race rather than uh, one with a lot of cornering or something like that. It's like not many obstacles in the way. But it's a testament to how well you can keep up your top speed on this course. And luckily we could just do snaking the vast majority of the, the race to keep it up. And hopefully with the help of power-ups, we can uh, mitigate that downtime even more. So we have to angle this pretty well. We can just boost right through here and then continue snaking across this part. Now for this part right here, I have to be over here so I can jump this wall and onto the other side. Oh, come on. Not recognizing my skid boost commands. But for that ramp, uh, you have to actually lift up on the bike so that you can get over the wall. Otherwise, you'll just run into the wall and not be over it, and that is considerably slower. Let's do some more sneaking and like during these parts, there are like good times to read donations or anything like that. Oh, I didn't. Okay. So I got a little angsty and didn't. I uh, reset too early so that it didn't put me on the other side of the jump. I forgot to mention that shortcut, so I'll do that the next go around. But but yeah, once you do that big shortcut. Uh, if you don't make it, uh, as long as you're like somewhere on the other side, you can reset and then they'll spawn you on the other side, just like any other reset uh, off of a jump. Alright, so there we go. Another good jump. Hopefully don't skid out of control. Master stunts. That's... Okay, but we just want to skid boost over here anyway. And for this upcoming part on laps 2 and 3, on these shortcuts right here, you have to actually slow down, otherwise you're just going to run into the cliff walls that you see above me. And that can really slow you down, even throw you off uh, in directions you don't want to be going in. Okay, so this big shortcut right over here. I'm just gonna use this as a ramp. Well, that wasn't ideal, but we managed to get to the other side anyway. Resetting here doesn't take up too much time. It's like less than a second loss. So even if you miss, uh, it's still still not bad. Like I said, uh, right around these points, they're good for a donation reading. Oh, okay, barely made it. So here, I think we can just straight up boost. Probably get another power up. No, I just missed that crystal. Seventeen. That's actually pretty bad, but understandable since I missed that 
I messed up that reset uh, abuse on the second lap. But anyway, on to Gabriel's Horn. Actually, one of the more beautiful looking tracks in the game. It starts out with this one long straightaway, perfect for gathering up, doing stunts, gathering boost. And just wait for our moment to strike to try and get ahead of everyone. Because Gabriel's Horn features quite a number of alternate paths that you can take. But we're just going to be going along the main route. Because that tends to, you tend to like go through a series of hoops just to even get access to those. Uh, alternate pass and another big reset of use right there saves up quite a chunk of time I missed the red crystal it's fine we'll just get the power up here and end up being crafting anyway okay so this series of turns right here here as long as you're like near top speed you can just skid boost back up to your max speed and worry about getting boost later and some more siphon mashing as well better just to snake on that part as well. You don't want to be using the ramps on that part because you don't know whether it's going to be pointing up or down and you want to have it point down just so that you don't get much air. But it's just best to avoid them altogether. And I just got an infinite boost. And we just managed to nab that red crystal. Faster stunts is not bad. We can use that in this later part. Alright, so that's not the ideal way to do those turns. Hopefully I can show it off on lap 3. Basically, uh, on the second turn, you just uh, go full on boost and uh, ride the walls into the third turn where you can just skid boost from there. And again, hopefully I can show you that. Right, we're just gonna straight up boost there. There are times where even Breck can skid out of control off of turning at high speeds. Just one little scrape against the wall will, will throw him off as well. Thankfully we got that infinite boost, because we would have had to eat up a lot of boost just to get back up to top speed. Alright, so here, and here. All right, that wasn't perfect, but that was a pretty good representation of what I wanted to show off. And for the rest of the way, we could just skid boost, then use up the rest of our boost meter. 352. That's not terrible. Oh, and after each season, once you complete each season, uh, you get a uh, victory screen where they actually show the face of the character that you play as. But we're not going to show that because we're going to have to skip that every single time. So on to season 3, and... We're going to start off with Neocropolis, which is actually one of the more difficult tracks in the game. Uh, same thing in like Lost City, where uh, there are a lot of things that can slow you down. But this is where, uh, this is one of the tracks where AI can be brutal, because there's not much room, and they can just like push you around. Yeah. 
They can just like really hate on you. So I'm gonna have to use this here. Alright, I think we're good. I we wanna lift up on the bike here on this ramp just so that we can sneak in to this part without losing any speed. And then right into this tunnel right here, which is absolutely perfect. And of course all the fans in the tunnel. And here we can just skid boost. So we don't lose speed. We have to angle it kind of perfectly in order to get to this part without too much trouble. And then this part right there is really hard to keep your bike in the center of the track. Because it could throw your bike around for seemingly no reason. That wasn't too bad. Alright, hopefully that worked. Yeah, looks like it did. Perfect. And we can nap this red crystal for fast enough. Nice, and another super boost. Always happy to see super boosts. Not happy to run into the fan though. Ah. Okay. Sometimes it's hard to like get yourself back on track. There we go. Okay. It, somehow the track just threw my bike off into a direction I wasn't expecting. Yeah, faster stunts we can do on this on the big jump. And the reason why I don't reset abuse here is that it won't actually take you to the other side of the jump. It'll just put you back near the ramp itself. And, oh, man. I didn't expect to be that slow. And the fan hit me. But a 310, that's not bad. Oh, I'll take it. We got considerably lucky with the AI hindrance. So that was pretty good. Alright, on to Metroscape. Uh, Metroscape features a lot of hairpin turns, and the track itself is like so warped. It's actually kind of cool looking. So, not so obvious shortcut right here. We got super boost, it's pretty good. Alright, managed to get back up to 350 before super boost ended. And for that split in the path, you always want to take the right hand path because the left hand uh, side is just a much longer right hand path except it has a red crystal at the end but it's definitely not worth it in the slightest bit all right for these hairpin turns you want to be as fast as you can using skid boost to get around them efficiently and quickly and this last part right here, we're just gonna collapse one and two. We're just gonna do stunts to build up our boost meter. It's very easy to keep up. Well, sometimes it's easy to keep up your top speed, but then it's just as easy to lose it due to. Um, just missed skid boost commands, or inputs, I should say. That turn is kind of tricky because it's actually kind of deceptive because the way that the, the camera works in this game, how you view your character, it doesn't show the extreme twists and turns uh, as you see right now. It's actually pretty cool once you see the track itself in replay mode. Just like how cool looking, uh, how um, nicely designed they are, I should say. So 
of lost a bit of speed there, but with all these boost strips, it's pretty easy to get back up to speed. And this is why we need to build up so much boost, is because during these hairpin turns, if we lose any speed, we just boost right back up and somehow turn too much. But once those uh, skid boost inputs come together nicely, you know, it looks really nice. And the turning looks really smooth. Alright, on to Emerald Eve, another beautiful looking track. Uh, probably because of all the green, maybe. But this track's like first two thirds or so uh, features a lengthy half pipe section. And you know how much I love half pipes, especially how well you can control your bike in. And these AI are not being friendly. Hope I get the shortcut, which I did. We have to actually slow down to get this red crystal, otherwise we overshoot it and miss it entirely. So I just like straight up boost siphon, like the, like half of the half of the shortcut there, and we can just straight up boost until we run low. Of course, AI just loves to run into me. Even when you think you're ahead, even when you think you're ahead enough, you just like seemingly come from behind and just like bump you, and you're back down to 260 miles an hour. Oh, hopefully we'll grab that crystal, which we didn't. Usually the crystals are pretty lenient in their hitboxes, so you can still grab a crystal from a ways away. Especially the that red one red crystal, the second to last red crystal that uh, that's on the track. But here we'll try to because that shortcut is pretty narrow, so you want to be like very careful about not trying to turn too much. Otherwise, you're just gonna skid on the uh, boost strips. Concentrate on this section. It's actually quite tricky. It's much harder than it looks. And during this part, sometimes the camera drone just loves to swoop down and just like bonk you. So you just end up losing a lot of speed for nothing. And that gets pretty annoying. And you always want to be on this right hand side for all the boost strips. I did try to get near the center. Didn't get the red crystal again, which is surprising. That's okay. And we can just do a bit of sneaking whenever we can. Don't want to skid out of control, especially here. Hold siphon here. So we can get this red crystal. Alright, that was pretty good. And we just do a bit of snaking since we don't have much boost. Since we didn't get a boost power up. On that red crystal. Right. Hopefully we'll get this red crystal this time around. There we go. Only a 30% boost, but that's okay. Hopefully we'll get... no. Oh. Say, if we hit the second to last ramp, we might have a chance to grab that last red crystal, but unfortunately we didn't. 
Okay, so on to the final track of season three, Electrica X, the Electric Hunting. So, right away, there's a big shortcut here that'll lead to a lot of boost. Just right here. That's perfect. And then we'll just siphon up all of this boost. And then lift up on the bike so that we can grab this red crystal. And this is one of the few times where drafting can be somewhat useful. Uh, if we can catch up to the other characters. But unfortunately we didn't. As you can see those uh, rings that you saw. Uh, if you go in them then you'll get boost from the drafting. And then this part right here is pretty cool. Again it's just nothing but boost strips. Siphon them up and keep up with your top speed, and then we're just gonna skid boost right here. Then, all right. So you actually want to lift up on the bike so that you can not bonk your head on the ceiling, because then you'll consider yourself fallen, and then you'll reset back in the tunnel uh, at zero speed. But uh, I I just use the wheels to like use it to bounce off of the top of the tunnel and then you don't want to do it you don't want to pull up on the bike too much otherwise you'll actually stick onto the ceiling and then you'll be facing the wrong way so you'll have to reset anyway so that's something to keep in mind Get some more boost power ups, which is fine. So, like right here. And as soon as you touch the ceiling, you want to uh, put your bike back down the normal as soon as possible. Okay, so three for three on the shortcut without having to reset, so that's pretty good. And for this upcoming piston tunnel. Uh, it's on a global cycle, and you can somewhat tell which ones are going to pop up. Uh, it's best to know a route to go to, so that you're in between those pistons. And yeah, for this tone right here, just you can just uh, hold down the boost button if you had like a bo full boost meter. Ooh, super boosted again. Got it. All right, three for three. I'm happy with that. It's not a terrible difficult trick, but it's still difficult nonetheless if you don't know what you're doing. 316 is pretty good, actually. All right, so now that we're done with the season tracks, we're going to move on to the bonus tracks. And we're going to start here with the season one bonus track, Suicide Slide. Now this is actually the shortest track in the game, so I'll try and uh, hurry up with my explanations on what I do here. So, as you can see, there are like plenty of alternate paths that you can take, but again, we're just taking this main route. And hopefully avoid everybody. Boosting. We're gonna save up our power pips until the second lap. Although we do want to grab this one. And then just drift boost right here. Sneak in below here. That was pretty good lap one. And then we're just gonna skip boost. Cross these straightaways. Burst attack is not an ideal power up. So that's unfortunate. But we'll get something here. First 
First attack again. Not very good. We're actually low on boost. So we want to be careful here. Alright, we actually want to do some stunts here. I didn't get the combo boost. It's fine. Just need more stunts. Another burst attack. That's pretty bad RNG this time around. But hey, what can you do? Hopefully we'll get something good on this last one. Faster yeah, faster sense. Oh well. What can you do? So we're just going to finish uh, boosting here. So two minutes. That's kind of expected. We did fairly well. But... Uh, no significant boost power-ups really hinder that a bit. Okay, so now coming up is actually the most difficult track in the game, Lost City 2. Uh, casually, this is almost impossible, but uh, mostly because this track is mostly linear. Like, this is the only part where there's a split in the path. And then everybody meets up right around here. So what we're going to do here is not only this track is linear, but it's also pretty narrow. So there are plenty of opportunities for the AI, the AI to like to like bump into you and slow you down immensely. And now uh, what's coming up is good opportunity to pass them is in this tunnel. Just skid boost. You can also stunt here if you want, but if you're at top speed, then it's best to skid boost in that part. Oh. For some reason, uh, the right hand side of the track is, there's no it's like it's not solid for some reason. Just use a first attack here. Hopefully this will be enough, because once you're separated from the AI, then it becomes a lot easier and a lot more manageable. Okay. So if I'm not talking as much, that means I'm concentrating on this one because this is actually quite difficult. And actually, the only track where it's a possibility where I don't finish first. But it doesn't matter if you finish first or not, just as long as you're progressing through the category. As you can see here, it's a lot more manageable, and we managed to get an infinite boost on top of that. So that's really good. And then we'll just boost the rest of the way. Okay, a 218 is really good. I will take it. Okay. So now we're going to head into the final track of the game. Probably like... One of the more iconic tracks in the game, mostly because of the music that plays during this race, Orbital Junction 2. And it's not terribly difficult, um, it's just a matter of where you need to go, because this track offers a lot of alternate path choices, and I gotta get centered up on this shortcut right here, because we actually want the red crystal here, and infinite boost is pretty good. But yeah, again... Oh man, okay, I had to <laughs> concentrate for a second there. But uh, again, you can go onto the ceilings to access the shortcuts. And we'll just do some skid boosting during this part right here. Alright, so here 
Oh, didn't skip boost there or there. That's fun. Yeah, we want to go on this right-hand side. It's much faster, especially if you know how to skid boost effectively, which apparently I didn't do. <laughs> and then here for laps two and three on this part, you could just skid boost and you'll still uh, hopefully maintain your top speed. Because for this part right here, we're going to have to... have to use up a lot of boost. Of course I won't. Not stunting. Okay, okay. That was scary. Alright. I'm gonna shut up a bit so I can get myself back in the groove. Alright. I'm gonna have to do a bit of stunts just to get back some boost that I lost. Alright. Alright, come on. Usually when you were like short on boost, you can just do two stunts and then uh, just let go so that it'll give you a two times combo. Because that still gives you a decent amount of boost. So that you can continue uh, boosting when you need to. Alright, 30% boost, that's not bad. Alright, what do we got here? Another infinite boost, which is okay. No super boost so far, but can't have everything. I'll take the infinite boosts whenever they give me it. And, and if we were doing this on RTA, uh, hopefully I don't mess up the skid boosting here. Alright, that's good enough. So time will be right here. And that is Kinetica. I hope you have enjoyed this. Um, I've certainly enjoyed... Uh, well, let me put this in replay. I've certainly enjoyed running this game as there... I, I'm like still discovering uh, ways to save time, but uh, everything that you've seen is basically the accum accumulation of all of the time save that I have uh, come up with over the past like year or so of playing this game. or. Uh, is basically speed running this game so thank you for watching uh, again i hope you've enjoyed it and i hope to see you again later